Oh, sorry. So, good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, membrane dy dynamics. So, uh, as you know, last week, we are talking about the uh, integrin and extracellular metrics. So, how the integrin as a one of type of receptor that can feel and sense the extracellular metrics as well as uh, extracellular force like stretch, compressive, or shear force. So you can simply imagine how they uh, catch and then feel the extracellular microenvironment. And then uh, what happened after the integrin feel the extracellular matrix or their force? And then maybe something can be uh, transmitted to the cell membrane, right? So this is a cell membrane. So today I'm going to talk about some simple cell biology structure and then how this each cell component they can react against the mechanical force. So this is some cell membrane and, this, and some ion channel and then this can be some a protein embedded in cell membrane and then certain glycocalyx or glycoprotein. And then when you look at the, the structure, so let's see, this is a physical and electrical barrier, you can see. And then uh, from the cell membrane, they can do cell communication. And certain ion channel or receptor that can help for cellular biochemistry and mechanical properties and cell motility can be mediated by cell membrane. And the compartmentalization, this is some kind of endocytosis or exocytosis to uptake, to drink, or to secrete some extracellular physical. And then as a basic structure, uh, the cell membrane consists of bilipid layer, one lipid layer, the other lipid layer, and then intersize is hydrophilic, right? This is hydrophilic lipid and hydrophobic lipid. So, and then yeah, this is another yeah, more focused cell membrane. And then let's say this is an extracellular matrix and then integrin alpha and beta and then certain uh, focal that is a complex is formated and then actin is polymerized and this actin can be uh, rich, can reach to the nucleus membrane. And then other talin and FAK, paxilin, those are one of the focal complex, focal complex adhesion proteins and EGFR, uh, epidermal growth factor receptor is some certain kind of growth factor that can uh, mediate a growth factor receptor that can mediate growth factor also theoretically affect to the cell behaviors. And then this is a cell ECM meeting. And then when you look at the cell to cell, uh, also cell to cell can cross link and communicate each other through ecadrine. And then through ecadrine, they can physically cross link each other like um, polymerization of the polymer, and then this linker and then myosin 2 and then actin is also formated. So when you look at the cell membrane, you have to remember cell membrane, they can feel and touch the extracellular matrix, and then they also have growth factor receptor, and then uh, uptake the growth factor from the extracellular matrix, and then they can uh, mediate some cellular be behaviors. So, uh, what can be hap what can happen through the cellular membrane? So let's imagine this is your cell. So you want to uptake certain um, growth factor or uh, virus, bacteria, or other other kind of ions, and then they can be capsulated as a vesicle, and then membrane vesicle forms from donor membrane. Donor membrane means this extracellular cell membrane, and then membrane vesicles are formed. And then after vesicles are formed, uh, they can fusion with the endosome, 
and then certain time through the lysosome, endosome, fusion, when this is some bacteria or virus, they are clear out, or uh, when this is nanoparticle or a certain EV, extracellular vesicle, which is good for cell, and then they are endosome, and then after endosome, they can go to the Golgi or nucleus. So the cell, they decide after, after invasive this extracellular vesicle through the macro environment, and they decide they have to go to the lysosome or to, through the endosome. So this is some cargo transportation. And then if you feel that this cell membrane is, uh, they have some certain solid form. So when they are formed like this, the cell membrane has some tension. They have to feel some tension, right? So if you stretch your skin, and then you, when you make some kind of this bud-like structure, you feel some pain. When you feel some pain, which means the tension is mediated. So the so membrane facilitates the trafficking of cellular cargo throughout the cell. This may occur as an endocytosis. We can call it this phenomenon of the endocytosis. And where material is taken into the cell, and then exocytosis, where material is expelled from the cell. So through the cell membrane tension change, cell can uptake or cell can secrete. Uptake means endocytosis, secret means exocytosis. In addition to being regulated by defined biochemical signaling pathway, efficiency of membrane trafficking system in cell are influenced by physical factors, such as increased membrane tension. So you can simply imagine you will not sure about uh, cell stretching can increase uptake, decrease uptake. We are not sure at the moment. But you can feel when you change the cell membrane tension, something change, right? In a good way or bad way. So throughout this uh, lecture, uh, I'm going to talk about how the force or mechanical change can mediate this kind of uptake or exocytosis of the, of the cell. So during the internalization of the pathogen with, with phagocytic vesicle, an increase in membrane tension serves as a feedback for triggering exocytic pathways that will add in the recycling of membrane protein in order to increase the membrane area for the formation of more phagocytic vesicle. Let's say you are the inflammatory cell when you uptake some bacteria through phagocytosis, cell membrane is tensioned because they have to be formed like this. Membrane tension, and then as a feedback mechanism, uh, this membrane is used. So total membrane is decreasing, right? So they have to recycle to go back to the extracellular and cell membrane structure. So it's a recycling membrane protein is, is triggered by the membrane tension. And then uh, from the cell point of view, the cell, let's say they are static. They are not secreting or uptaking the extracellular vesicle. And then at the time when you stretch it, what happens? Cell feel like, oh, uh, I feel cell membrane tension. So I have to make or recycle more extracellular vesicle cell membrane. So they have to make more cell membrane. So in, in this way, you have to utilize this kind of cellular behaviors. Furthermore, force generated by molecular motors along the cytoskeletal tracks are used to physically shuttle membrane vesicle across the cell. Most vesicle traffic along microtuber using kinesin or dynamic motors, although they can also use myosin 2 and myosin 5 motors to move along the actin network. So um, sometimes you need some motor to move this vesicle to inside or move this vesicle to the cell membrane. So sometimes they need some microtuber or myosin 2 or actin. So in certain way, you have to consider, so when you highlight, okay, stretch can increase some extracellular vesicle secretion, and then you have to say that 
this can be mediated by actin or microtuber, and then from the microtuber, kinesin or dynamic motors can be mediated. You have to determine this specific phenomenon. So as I told you that we have many uh, subcellular structure in cell membrane integrin, growth factor receptor, carbohydrate, increased syndecan, and HP binding and ion channels. So how the mechanically gated ion channel facilitate the mechanical transduction? So previously I just did some general approach how the mechanical force can change the cell membrane in terms of endocytosis, exocytosis. But certain channel that can be triggered directly by a uh, stretch. So we can call it mechanical gated ion channel. So let's uh, look at the, their behavior, what happened the mechanical stretch ion channel. So when you see, uh, this is ion, let's say calcium ions. So when you look at this side, they are stretch. Yeah, like this, they are stretch, and this ion channel is open. And then go back to their original position. Once again, when they are stretch, they open. Actually, this is a little bit different from the other uh, ion channel. Other ion channel, they're just like literally they're open. But in this way, this piezo, this is a piezo ion channel. Piezo ion channel, when they open, they go up and then they are making some kind of pore. And then through the pore, they can uh, deliver their specific ion to the inside of the cell. So this is a little bit different. This, so we can call it like leverage, uh, leverage ion channel. There, this kind of structure is kind of leveraging. So it's a little bit different formation from the other ion channel like calcium, potassium, hydrogen ion channel. Uh, and the pH ion channel is a little bit different from their, how they transport, transport the ions. So you can imagine why this happening. So this kind of ion channel, this is, we can call it stretch mediated ion channel. So that is why this ion channel is generated. The purpose of this screencast is to review uh, the basic types of ion channels and their functional states. So this ion channel, uh, when the creator, when they make this ion channel, they have to make it depending on the stretch or mechanical force, right? So when the creator, when the gut, they, when the gut make this kind of stretch mediated ion channel, what can be the best option? So when they make this one, they uh, make this kind of little bit typical, not typical, like um, interesting structure that can be easily uh, triggered by the mechanical force. So this original structure, and then when the stretch through the cell membrane or through the actin filament, when they are forced left and right, and then this ion, this mechanical ion channel can go up and then open the pore, and the calcium okay, they can go down. So this mechanical transduction relies on the ability of cells to convert mechanical cues such as stretch, compression, biochemical signals. One way this occurs is through the activity of the mechanically gated ion channel. So like calcium ion channel, 
Physiologically, calcium ions serve as an important messenger in a range of signal, signaling mechanisms. The effect of calcium influx is cell type dependent. In muscle cell, calcium is mediated to induce some contraction, while in neurons, voltage gated calcium ion channel will promote the release of a neuron transmitter at the synapse. Anyhow, muscle and neuron, they use the calcium to uh, mediate their cell behavior. From the mechanical biological perspective, calcium ion channels are particularly important as they contribute to embryo development, stem cell differentiation, and general mechanical sensing process. In this case, as your substrate stiffness or other mechanical property of the cellular microenvironment are the primary regulator of the calcium influx. So one of the mechanical gates, the calcium ion channel is pH one and two. So let's look at the pH one and two. So uh, actually a few ion channels have been confirmed as being mechanically regulated. Page one, together with the page two, are evolutionally conserved gate ion channel that have been shown to be regulated by mechanical stress in the plasma membrane. Activity is channel facilitate the transduction of the mechanically activated cationic current in cell, especially calcium. So for example, neural stem cell differentiation was shown to be mediated by the activity pH1. When the ion channel was disrupted using siRNA or other kind of pharmacological uh, drug, neural stem cell differentiate through the astrocyte rather than neurons. So, so you have neural stem cell they can, they can have potential to differentiate astrocyte, neuron, and oligodendrocyte. What? Then, when their pH of 1 is defected by the genetically or pharmacologically, the neuron stem cell, they never go to neuron. They only go to the astrocyte. So what does it mean? So let's say you have the neuron stem cell in your brain. So your brain is damaged, but your brain somehow they are losing their pH one channel, and then they cannot differentiate to the neuron, which means neuron damage, brain damage cannot be regenerated. So that is why pH ion channel is very important. So and then you feel like pH one, pH two, they are stretch or mechanical force mediated ion channel, and, and, and is it really necessary in the brain or neuron? So when you look at the brain tissue, brain tissue is like soft, and then they are covered by the, your scar, bone, and then there is no way to affect the compression or certain kind of stress, right? We cannot uh, touch the brain tissue using your finger, but in the skin, you can, you can easily touch. So why the creator, the God, they make this piezo ion channel in the neuron stem cell. And then nowadays, uh, people try to ask th this kind of question. And then recently in uh, Nature Biology paper, they mentioned that through the aging, the brain tissue is stiffened. So when you look at the baby brain, they are young, and then their brain is very soft. But when you look at your father's grandfather, grandma, grandmother brain, they are very stiff. So why the younger, young generation, they regenerated fast, even they are brain damaged? Which means the neuron stem cell, they are easily differentiated to the neuron. Because the neuron stem cell, they feel the soft stiffness. In soft, soft stiffness, the pH one is highly, uh, how can I say? In soft stiffness, the pH one is highly activated. Yeah, because so pH one is some kind of mechanically activated channel, and then when the neuron stem cell they they move to the in, uh, inner core of the brain to the extracellular outer boundary of the uh, brain tissue, when they when they go through the penetrate from the center to the extracellular boundary, uh, the neuron stem cell can can feel some certain kind of soft tissue stiffness easily, right? But when, when your age, your, the person's age is aged, and the neural stem cell, even though they are inside, 
in the core of the brain, but the total uh, extracellular brain tissue is stiffened, and then the stem cell cannot penetrate to the damaged tissue. Oh. So they cannot differentiate, they cannot go there, and then they cannot differentiate, differentiate to the specific mm. neuron, right? So, and, or, and then the other point is that actually page one is more highly expressed, highly activated in stiff. They have less uh, activate in the soft. This is true. But as I told you, baby, they have soft stiffness, and then in the older, older brain, they have high stiffness. And then you can imagine, oh, high stiffness, the neurostem cell, they feel more stretch because they, they have to adhere to the high stiffness uh, extracellular neuron, uh, extracellular brain, right? But the point is that you have to imagine as a 3D structure. In 2D, it really happened, right? But neural stem cell, they are encapsulated in the 3D structure. So in 3D structure manner, the older brain, they are stiffened, and which means they have slow sex relaxation. So slow sex relaxation, which means the neural stem cell, they cannot modulate the extracellular matrix. And then they cannot feel properly the force through the outer cellular matrix. But when in young baby, they are soft, and then in 3D manner, they have fast sexualization, and then they can um, change the extracellular matrix, and then they can activate the PH1 channel easily because they can, um, they can spread out their uh, arm and leg easily. So they can activate the PH1 channel, and then they can differentiate the neuron. So uh, when you look at this kind of one concept, you have to try to understand why the creator make this kind of page one channel in neuron or in muscle, in osteoblast, other things. And then when you ask this kind of question very often, you can, when you do some experiment, and then you, when you link this experiment result to the real clinical settings, and you can publish in very good journal. Uh, so, uh, when you look at this kind of concept in the textbook or in certain uh, literature, you have to ask repeatedly why the creator make this kind of thing. And then how they link to our target cell or target tissue. And how the membrane reservoirs alter membrane tension. Membrane reservoirs, membrane tension, and that's skeleton. So let's say, uh, I stretch this cell using flexor system, that stretch. And after stretch release, this tubular invagination we can detect. So what, does the load, what is the load of this tubular invagination? This is ready for the cell stretch. So when cells, cells are stretched, this tubular invagination, they are used for making uh, for compensating the cell membrane tension. So this is some kind of reservoir. Reservoir means um, some kind of chosuji or saver, something like res reservoir. But so when you imagine this is stretch and this reservoir is consumed to let them stretch. Okay? So when you have your cell in iso Osmatic, isosmatic means um, just normal condition. They have vacuum-like dilation. This is also reservoir. And then when your cells are uh, cultured under hypoosmotic, hypoosmotic means hypoosmotic uh, environment. And then cell volume is increased because more water, they have to go inside the cell. Hypoosmotic osmotic is less uh, osmotic pressure outside, and then compared to outside, inside the cell they feel more hyper osmotic pressure, so the water can go inside to compensate this osmotic pressure. So when they are stretched, they are stretched. 
So this kind of uh, VLDs and tubular invagination we can detect for preparing the cell stretching or cell volume increase. Okay. So this membrane area is very closely linked to the membrane tension, such as skeletal attachment and membrane reservoirs. During cell spreading, initial increase in membrane area requirements are met by depleting membrane reservoirs with a phology of large, for such as microbial spikes, filopodia, and lophus. Once these reservoirs are depleted, membrane tension increase and activates the exocytosis as well as myosin contraction. The actin cytoskeleton under this reservoir dissembles while the polymerization actin in the protruding part of the spreading cell push the membrane forward. Besides this large membrane reservoir, small membrane reservoir have been described and characterized. So it's, uh, this is some their description, how, what is the role of this reservoir, but you can simply think this reservoir is consumed when they are stretched and when the cell are increased their volume and then uh, depending on their cell behaves, the reservoir is consumed or they are making. And then this kind of reservoir is highly close, highly linked to the cell membrane tension. So these people describe the formation of the small membrane reservoir upon release of membrane stress in physically stressed cell and respiration myostonic condition. So this membrane reservoir formed almost instantly through a passive, purely mechanically process and were not influenced by the cytoskeleton. This is very important. This membrane reservoir, you can imagine, oh, this, this reservoir is uh, consumed under the membrane's tension, so maybe they can be influenced by the cytoskeleton. It's acting, but true is they are not influenced by the cytoskeleton which means they are uh, in that way, they are consumed. Their resorption requires active membrane remodeling. As reservoirs can store and release membrane upon subsequent stretch cycle, they may function to support the constant requirement of membrane remodeling in viral process where cells undergo continuous cycle of stretch and relaxation. So I, th I feel like the reason why they use, the reason why they don't use such skeleton for mediating member reservoir because they have to, the member reservoir consume should react fast, more fast, or more in that way. When, when, when you use such skeleton, they need some ATP energy. So I feel like the reason why they didn't use such skeleton to mediate this kind of member reservoir is uh, they, they are passive. They are direct and indirect way, but fastly they can react the cell volume change or cell stretch force. The nature of these membrane reservoirs differ depending on the type. A mechanical streamline, of course. For example, tubular invagination results from stretch release, whereas osmotic shock causes a larger we are this. So when you are doing something related to the stretch, and then you can determine the tubular invagination using certain dye. Okay? So when you link, when you stretch it, or this tubular invagination uh, disappear. When they, are, when they are not stretched, they are formed again. So, so this is a kind of indicator they are stretched or not. So when you feel like if you want if you use culture the cell on soft and stiff substrate, and then when you die, the tubular invagination, so you can simply imagine, oh, when there are disappears, disappearance of tubular invagination, what happened? Cell feels tension and they are stretched, okay? And then when, when you detect high amount of tubular invagination, they are not stretched, they are not tension. This, this can be used as a sub marker for displaying your phenomenon. So you can link this kind of concept to your study. And then, uh, this, what is the membrane curvature? So the cell have to move and cell have to uptake something and uh, secrete something. For that, they need conical lipid, inverted conical lipid, cyclic lipid, BAR protein, 
calling for protein, amylopedia, and polypodia. They are using many kinds of subcellular organelles to mediate the cell membrane curvature. For what? To move, to go, to feel something. And then, anyhow, when you look at this, especially the polypodia and amylopodia, they are using actin cytoskeleton, right? But this kind of thing, they use certain protein and then certain uh, anchored protein in cell membrane. So anyhow, the cell membrane curvature refers to the physical bending of membrane to accommodate various cell morphology change as well as the formation of the membrane-bound transport intermediate like spherical physical or tube. The membrane is inelastic and resistant to spontaneous bending, which means membrane they are easily bended. Membrane curvature is generated through active process mediated by specialized protein, lipid, and cytoskeleton. So they need specialized protein, lipid, and cytoskeleton because the membrane is not easily bended by themselves. They have to use energy to change some cell membrane. Okay? So they need mechanical force to bend membrane. And definitely they have to use some energy. So why is membrane, so let's say the membrane is curved, curvature, and then something can go out and go inside, right? This is called membrane trafficking. Trafficking is, they have two ways. One is endocytosis, eat drinking. Exocytosis, spilling out, okay? Both of them are called membrane trafficking. So let's look at in detail membrane trafficking. So you can see one, two, three, four, exocytosis, five, six, seven, nine. So for exocytosis, one mechanism, then just one pathway, which is called exocytosis. Very simple. But when cell uptake, send drink some molecule, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mechanism. So you feel like, why does cell have this kind of large, huge amount of, and large amount of mechanism to uptake? Maybe each pathway, they have certain region. But some certain, but certain pathway, they are not specialized, not defined yet, what the real role of the endocytosis. So simply, one and two, when your nanoparticle or your certain extracellular vesicle, when they uptake them by number one, this is good or bad. Number two, good or bad. So, silver nanoparticle, silver nanoparticle, they are differently uptaken in different way. What, what does it mean? Actually, people try to look at this kind of concept, but they are not defined yet. But when you have some other cell type like inflammatory cell, mesenchymal stem cell, or normal fibroblast, maybe depending on their cell type, they prefer some specific endocytosis mechanism. So you have to, when you uh, study about some endocytosis of nanoparticle or certain, uh, certain way, you have to study about what kind of this cell. And then generally, this, this type of cell, they uptake the extracellular vesicle through number one or number two. So you have to study first. So let's say clustering mediated. Clustering is a kind of soccer ball, okay? Phagocytosis. This can be mediated generally by inflammatory cell, right? Like macrophage, neutrophil. Macropinocytosis. This is normally happen when you treat the nanoparticle. When you treat nanoparticle, one, maybe 90-90% they actually not 90%. Over 90%, they, per, they prefer perform macropinocytosis to uptake nanoparticle. Number four, carbiola endocytosis. They are using specific carbiola protein. A little bit different from the crassling. Okay? And then number five, click and gag endocytosis. Very spe specialized. Go inside deeply. RF6 mediated. They are using RF6 protein. It's kind of interleukin uh, receptor 2. No. So, which means they are 
mostly this LF6 is mediated by interleukin 2, mediated something. And flotinin, flotilin mediated, they are using flotin protein, FEM, FEME. Low interleukin 2, are, uh, sorry, this is not interleukin 2. Low interleukin 2 mediated. This is interleukin 2 receptor, R receptor, so they mediate interleukin 2. So we can simply say classic mediated, other thing is non classic mediated. Because classic is originally and primarily found. And then other things we can say non classic mediated. But non classic mediated, they have a lot of sub subtypes. So we are talking about one by one, so simply, and then how the mechanical force or stretch they can change this classically mediated endocytosis or excitosis. And then after uptaking to the inside of the cell, what happened? They are go through early endosome. And then they can go late endosome. And through the endosome, what is endosome? Endosome is when the cell, this uh, endocytosic vesicle, when they are fully uh, closed, and then this is called endosome. Okay, and endosome, when when the cell feel this is good, and then they have to deliver this uh, endosome component to the Golgi Golgi complex, or they can directly transport to the nucleus. Okay. And then this endosome, they have cell membrane, right? Because the endosome is generated from the cell membrane. So as a recycle way, they have to deliver this uh, membrane of endosome to the Golgi complex for recycling. And then why the lysosome? Lysosome means they feel like, oh, mm, this, I have to clear out this inside of the component. And then they fuse the lysosome. And then, after fusing, they have to clear it out through excitosis. So this is some general journey of the nanoparticle or extra vesicle uptake, early and late endosome, and sometimes lysosome, lysosome fusion, and then go outside. And then, during that time, they can recycle the endosome. Hmm. So membrane trafficking can be divided exocytosis and endocytosis. Exo, as you imagine, secret. Endocytosis, uptake. And then through the uh, important function of the endocytosis, one of them is autophage. Why is autophage? It's self-recycling. Okay? When you autophage something, they have to, may, there are many ways. When they feel some damage, they also perform autophage, but when they feel I have to make some bone, also they have to do autophage. And the phagocytosis, they have to uptake some bacteria or virus to kill. This is a general uh, function of the phagocytosis. So anyhow, this kind of exo, endo, autophago, they are all involved. They should be mediated by that they can be influenced by force, like a stretch or exercise skeleton sometimes. Sorry. Oh. So several endocytosis pathway, nanoparticle, EV journey. As I told you, clathlin. So when you look at the bio TM images of the clathlin endocytosis, you can really see this kind of structure. So I train have a bio TM preparation protocol. So we can after simply getting the cell or bacteria in nanoparticle pore culture, and then you fix the cell using specialized chemical, and then we can deliver this 
cell pellet to the bio, um, bio T and bacilli T, they can capture. Mm. It's a little bit expensive, but anyhow, we can determine which kind of, we can visualize how the nanoparticle or extra vesicle can be transported inside of the cell. It's classlin. They are using classlin coat. And then carbiolet mediated. Carbiolet means carbiolet is little caves. How, how, how much the size? Size is 50 to 100 nanometer. Little cave. So they after caved, they can uptake. So as you can see, uh, this microtubule and stress fiber and even low way, they are mediating this carbiolet antithesis. Okay? So you can imagine, oh, this carbiolet, they can be mediated by stress. So if we want to highlight that stretch, when they increase some EV excretion, and then maybe you can catch some idea. Carbiole, one of them can be mediated, or other, other kind of classing can be mediated. And sometimes this carbiole is also used as a stress reliever, which means uh, when the stress fiber is tensioned, and then this carbiole is, how can I say, they are, they are formed as a bud, but when they are stretched, this bud is stretched to the left and right. And then this total cell membrane can be enlarged. So that, that is why this carbiole is called stress reliever. Okay? This is carbiole. When they are stretched, they open left and right, and then this is open to the out, outer cellular environment. Now, what are the other antithesis? LF6, interleukin 2, flotlin mediated, FEMA mediated. So anyhow, this is um, they are depending on which kind of protein is used for making this kind of bud, so we, we can name it. Especially the interleukin 2 receptor mediated 1, they are using ROC1 and low a pathway, and they activate PI3K. So uh, this is, we can imagine that they are highly linked to stress mediated endocytosis. So macropinocytosis, as I told you, most of nanoparticles, they are, con they are uptaken through macropinocytosis. Why? Uh, compared to the previous one, they are making very small cave, right? 50 to 100. But they need large cave, like few micrometer, up to five micrometer. So that is why they have to need this kind of engulfing, engulfing something, huge amount of the fluid and the nanoparticle together. So we can say that cell drinking, cell drinking nanoparticle, cell drinking extracellular <coughs> physical. Yeah. And then this size is 0.2 to 5 micrometer. So when you look at the bio TM, and certain, certain of, are formed inside of the cell through 0.2 and 5 micrometer, we can say that, oh, this is, this, this is macropinocytosis. And then this formation is actin-dependent process. Why they need actin? Why they need? They need power. They need, they need some force to engulf the extracellular nanoparticle or something, right? They need huge amount of power. So they, have, they are in, depending on actin dependent. And then they can be stimulated by CSF1, EGF, and PDGF, PDGF. So most of the growth factor, not most. This is CSF1, they, you can look at easily in immune cell. And what else? Osteoclast, right? A, epidermal growth factor is influenced by cancer or skin cell. And PDGF is fibroblast or skin regeneration. So when they regenerate, especially, and then when they need some phagocytosis, they need this kind of um, macropinocytosis. 
okay so while and most of cell can form macropinosome macropinosome is after drinking they are formed as a macropinosome in response to external signal such as growth factor macrophage and dendritic cell use constitutive macrophinosis to survey the extracellular fluid for the presence of the antigen so when you focus on macrophage how the macrophage or neutrophil they uptake the extracellular vesicle or virus or bacteria they have to screen to the extracellular microenvironment through macropinogen this kind we can say like a general screening process how the uh, innate immune cell they can detect detect the uh, foreign body in, in the extracellular environment so mechanical regulation of pinocytosis formation of macropinogen of course involves actin based deformation and remodeling of the cell membrane regular pi stimuli that can stimuli the cell are exposed to in order to uh, these people perform in vitro tests by exposing bovine endocytic cell to steady shear stress varying in amplitude between 0 to 15 nanometer centimeter and found that the rate and nature of pinocytic vesicle formation was influenced by change in shear stress of course when their shear stress change phagocytosis is influenced but more importantly they said slower periodically shear change were vital for upregulating pinocytic rate opposed to rapid shear changes no influence on pinocytosis so slow shear change they increase micropinocytosis but fast more fast shear change they cannot influence on micropinocytosis what does it, what does it mean which kind of cell they use they use which cell uh, endocellular cell let's imagine endocellular cell where they are they are uh, they are making blood vessel and then inner side of the blood vessel right this endocellular cell so when they feel very fast sheer stress they have no, no time to uptake macropinosis right because let's imagine endocellular cell when they are positioned in the aorta in aorta when, and then when they when the endocellular cell in aorta they anytime the fast stress fast shear they feel anytime and then in any time when they uptake certain extracellular vesicle through micro micropinosis endocellular cell Mm, maybe they're not good because their main function is they are making blood vessel and then uh, they have to be uh, some tunnel of the blood their main function is not obtaking some foreign bodies or other nutrient at, at that site but when the endocellular cell is the when they are positioned in some peripheral vessel or some your edge of the skin and then the blood flow flow is speed is decreasing right compared to heart and then now they are ready for they are more susceptible to uptake such a kind of foreign bodies uh, they are more chance to be damaged right compared to your heart your skin or your finger they are easily damaged so they are ready for to be uptaken by the macropinosis so they link this kind of concept to the original human body phenomenon you can simply imagine oh it makes sense right so actually i'm not sure of how these people they first do experiment 
maybe they h y p o t h e s i s that maybe they assume that a more high speed they can increase m i c r o p i n o s i s but their final re result can be reversed. So they just back up this kind of concept like this kind of manner. Or, firstly, their original idea is that oh, slow speed is more sensor sensitive to uptake the m i c r o p i n o g e n uh, I'm not sure which one is their original mind. But in either way, you can link, you can support your notion to the human body situation. So this is a long story, but so let's say I, I fabricate this nanoparticle, bioglass nanoparticle size is 100 nanometer, and then I culture nanoparticle to the uh, dental purpose stem cell. And then over, over the increase of concentration, and then I stain this nanoparticle as a red, l o d a m i n color, dye, and then using the facts, I can uptake through this 160 microgram per ml, only four hour incubation, the cell, most of the cell, they uptake this nanoparticle. But when I, when I culture this d e n t a p o r p o s stem cell and uh, red fluorescence nanoparticle together at four degree, no cell drink this nanoparticle, which means four degree is no ATP. They cannot make any ATP cell. So we can say this is ATP dependent manner nanoparticle uptake. And then when I treat the SA, SA is, where it is? Uh, sodium azide, another inhibitor of ATP dependent endocytosis. And then I culture them, 37 degree, our incubator, also 90% is decreasing. So we can, I can support that nanoparticle uptake is also ATP dependent. So I prove this notion to different methodology. Okay? And then AL, AL is amyloid in the middle of m i c r o p i n o s a t o s i s You can see, what is m i c r o p i n o s i s Drinking, cell drinking. And then through the 100%, 30% decrease. But other d e n i s t i n e inhibitor of c a r b i o l e and amantidin, inhibitor of c l a s l i n a little bit decrease, but not much compared to D. Okay? So I perform bio-TM. This is black one, it's nanoparticle. Okay? And this is cell membrane, and this nucleus. So what is the size? Two micrometer. What can be? This is m a c r o p i n o s i s of course. When you look at the size, you can imagine m a c r o p i n o s i s And then you can see this kind of uh, hand, right? Literally hand. So this is a typical structure of the m i c r o p i n o s i s m i c r o p i n o s a t o s i s So through this kind of uh, drug inhibitor study, and then bio TM, you can simply see what can, what kind of mechanism is involved. And then when you Google it, classically mediated bio TM images, and then. The, Literally, you can see this kind of soccer like, soccer ball like structure in bio team images. And the size is 50 to 100 nanometer. Okay? So when you fabricate some 2 nanometer of the silver nanoparticle, so maybe uh, other c l a s t e r i n or c a r b o l i n mediated a n o c y t o s i s can be detected. But our nanoparticle is over 100 nanometer. And then they are drink, drunk, they are drunken as a cluster, and then their total size is around two micrometer. So there is no way to uptake nanoparticle in m i c r o p i n o s a t o s i s And then exocytosis. Uh, exocytosis, yeah, three way: consecutive secretory pathway, regulatory secretory pathway, lysosomal secretory pathway. Anyhow, their, their starting point is Golgi apparatus, right? Maybe mRNA, DNA to mRNA, mRNA to protein, and then after Golgi, the protein is complex and then translated, and then they are ready for going out, okay? So constitutive secretive pathway, 
directly deliver fresh membrane lipid and protein to cell membrane. Regulated pathway used for specific cargo like hormones and neurotransmitter when they are receptor mediated. Let's say this neuron, when the neuron transmitter is binding this neuron transmitter receptor, they are ready and they are secret their component. This is called regulated secretory pathway. And then lysosomal pathway directly transport cargo to the membrane or digest or eject debris out of the cell. So when you when the cell detects some bacterial virus or nanoparticle, and then they feel like, oh, this is useless. And then after lysosomal fusion, they secret out. Okay? So consecutive secretory is some kind of uh, maintaining homeostasis. Okay? Like if we extracellular vesicle secretion or cell membrane fabrication, regulatory secretory pathway is kind of uh, external chemical stimuli mediated secretion. And this is some kind of clearance. So people are asking, okay, this kind of exocytosis can be really mediated by mechanical stress. So this is our paper in PNAS. So we dye, we make the cell Golgi JFP. Golgi is the compound starting point of the exocytosis membrane, right? So when we uh, making the cell, Golgi have JFP, and this Golgi, when they make exocytosis vesicle, they are also originated from the Golgi. So we can uh, image the secret uh, exocytostic physical. Let's see. Mm. You can see a little bit of color, right? So while they are spreading out on the substrate, they are making more EV. So this is a minute. So they are they consume ten hours, and then they track this. So as you can see, this kind of so we can say that okay, we understand the exocytosis can be accelerated when they are attached on substrate, right? And then they have phase one and phase two. Phase one is no contraction. Uh, sorry, this is um, not minute, second. So after three minutes, no contraction. But after three minutes to ten minutes, they, the cell membrane is tension, and then contractile force and contractile contract spreading is mediated, and then they dramatically increase the excitosis. Right? So, so they are doing like this, and they are capture this Golgi YFP images through this concept. So only using 10 minutes, this phase one, not much of exocytosis, or phase two, huge amount of increased exocytosis through contracted spreading. And the important thing is that uh, at a certain time, this isotonic, normal condition, but when they culture the cell, hypotonic, to increase the cell membrane tension, they jumped up, right? Exocytosis, which is plus intensity exocytosis amount, they jumped up, which means really 
cell membrane are tensioned and then exocytosis accelerated. Okay? So, also we can think that margin 2 actin mediator can change exocytosis via change of cell membrane tension, right? So, we can easily imagine this kind of uh, cell membrane tension or myosin 2 mediated actin, also they can change the exocytosis. Okay, uh, and autophage. Autophage in some, they recycle their intracellular component, right? The autophage also can be naturally regulated by mechanical stress, such as compression, stretching, or shear stress. Recent studies, this red osteoblast cell line have shown increase in autophage during mineralization. It suggests a link between low bone density and deficiency of autophage protein ATG5. So when the, this osteoblast cell, when they need mineralization, they need high amount of autophage, which means they have to recycle something to deposit extracellular microenvironment to make the bone. And then in recent study, uh, cell induced autophage in response to compressive stress. Uh, application of one kilopascal compressive stress, the normal physical, and there was a transient increase in the rate of autophage formation. So anyhow, the cell can change the autophage mechanism depending on the mechanical stress. But depending on cell type or um, uh, physical type, they are changed in a uh, positive way or negative way. Also, phagocytosis, normally mediated by immune cell. So as you can see, this phagocytosis, they need a lot of actin, right? So this is the actin-based mechanism in case of phagocytosis. A spike in the membrane tension has been shown to activate exocytosis, provide additional membrane area for the second phage phagocytosis. They are using this retinal pigment epithelial cell, like Pue used, and then uh, they, this cell line and substrate of different sub stiffness, phagocytic capacity of this retinal cell was found to decrease in a linear manner, a substrate rigidity increase. So, substrate rigidity increase, phagocytic capacity decreasing. What does it mean? When, when people are aged, uh, stiffer, this uh, retinal membrane becomes more stiffer. So, why the older people, they are losing their potential to clean out their eye, their eye membrane is stiffer, and then this uh, epithelial cell line, they have less potential to phagocytosis. So that's why they are more, they are more, they have more, more power, more potential to be damaged by the bad, bad bug or bad bacteria. So if you understand this kind of autophage, phagocytosis, exocytosis, endocytosis, and then you can choose one of your target cell and then link this kind of phenomenon to the real thing in the human body, this is a very good study. But always think about the mechanical force from the compression, stretch, tension, stiffness, or sex relaxation in 3D. Thank you. Thank you.